Morning, how you guys all doing today? So I thought I'd take this opportunity in, this, uh, in today's video to summarize uh, the day one of Jim Ingersoll's uh, event uh, on real estate investing. And, you know, it was, uh, you know, sort of tremendous start to finish. Um, you know, I was, uh, I was actively engaged. You should see my notebook uh, of all the stuff I, I took. But I thought I would take a time just to sort of give you a quick brief um, highlight of, of the different speakers uh, because I think each of them gave um, tremendous value and I thought uh, one of them might speak to you and you might want to look them up because I think I think they all you know sort of give and, and, and put stuff out there so the day began obviously with Jim kicking it off um, gave a, a, a great uh, sort of introduction to what what we were going to see what we we're going to do uh, and really um, you know put together a first class event because you know sometimes these events are so kind of structured and whatnot there's really not time to network and get to know people um, he didn't, um, you know, he didn't get over, he didn't overthink it, right? He had, I think, five or six presenters yesterday. I'll go through them in just a minute. Uh, he supplied pl uh, plenty of 15-minute breaks for people to go around. He had lunch. He took everybody out to dinner. Um, it was just, it was just spectacular. So uh, after Jim went, um, I was the first speaker up talking about being a landlord and building, you know, uh, passive income while you're holding a W-2 job. Really brought home, hopefully, the idea of, of a goal of getting to four. That was kind of, you know, goal number one for me was to get people to think about four uh, and then to, to think about how to get started, right? We broke down three different ways to get started. So that was sort of what I did. Uh, this is not about me. It's, it's about everybody else that's coming. After me uh, was perhaps a, a highlight of day one for me. Uh, Mary Hart, uh, who is uh, or was a practicing attorney um, out in, uh, in the Carolinas. And um, she was not like any attorney I'd ever met. Uh, she was funny. Uh, she, uh, she just said how it was. She was very clear that she wasn't giving advice and legal advice and all of that, but her war stories and samples and her ability to, you know, give you the full answer, right? A lot of times when I talk to attorneys, it's kind of like, it's the, it depends, come see me, right? It's like, well, that's not very helpful, right? She, uh, she put a lot out there and uh, you should look her up. It's heart, I believe it's H-A-R-T. Um, you know, Mary Hart, uh, I do believe she has a service that she puts out there for real estate investors. Uh, the other thing I really liked is she's focused on helping young people be financially literate. Uh, young people meaning teenagers and in their 20s. Uh, I too have an a, a interest in helping there, so that was, that was very cool to see. Uh, next up was Stephanie Lennon. Uh, she has an interesting story. Uh, you know, I've met, I've met a few MIT grads in my day. Uh, I've never met an MIT grad that also was in, worked in the uh, nuclear power plants. That was the first for me. So very bright. Um, it's like scary bright. Like sitting next to her, I felt stupid. Just we, we yeah, it was, it was it was odd. But that really wasn't it. It wasn't it wasn't about the intelligence. It's it's about who she was at her core. Um, so much so that she's created a book called What Would Water Do? Uh, and I was so so interested in that story because when you think about water, right, it doesn't go backwards. Um, it doesn't, you know, if it's in a river and it's carrying down debris and all of that, it just, it just doesn't cause, it doesn't complain, it doesn't, you know, do all those things. So um, I absolutely picked up her book, uh, What Would Water Do? It's a black cover. Um, I believe it's available on Amazon. Uh, I strongly recommend it. I'm actually going to hopefully read it cover to cover on my flight home from uh, the East Coast and then get her on this channel because uh, I do think it's pretty cool. Next up was Al Williams uh, out of Sacramento. Actually, it turned out he and I were on the same flight from Denver uh, to Richmond uh, yeah, two days ago. So uh, his, his, he has an interesting story, right? He uh, calls himself uh, the landlord scientist, which I thought was a pretty cool title. And when you really hear his story, you get to feel what he was really doing, right? He, he, he not only does Airbnb, uh, but what he did is he took Airbnb and started asking questions, right? What, what if I could do Airbnb, but not have all the turns, right? So instead of doing nightlies or vacation rentals, what, what, if, I, what if I served a different community, right? A different set of uh, tenants, like, you know, people who need long-term furnished apartments. You know, and he just broke it down in such a simple way. Uh, and I don't want to steal his thunder, but I challenge each of you, if you're thinking about Airbnbs, um, to look up Al Williams. Um, he's out of Sacramento. He's doing some tremendous stuff, very much a giver, and um, I think you'd do yourself a, a service. Uh, after Al, it was my good friend Tom Olson. Uh, I always like to hear him speak.
because he's one of those speakers that you could feel, right? You feel what he's talking about. He's very emotional. He delivers a great talk. And um, he was really pushing people to, to sort of think bigger and think about others and why you, you know, this big thing was your, your why, your why, why are you doing this? And it's, it's usually not about the money, right? It's, it shouldn't be just about money. There should be a bigger purpose and, and all of those things. So I just thought, uh, I just thought day one was uh, spectacular. Uh, it was worth the expense to get here, right? Airfare, hotels, foods, all that stuff for me. Uh, I'm paying out of my pocket. Uh, day one by itself, each of those presenters gave me stuff to think about. Uh, so if you are on the East Coast and certainly in the Richmond area, if you're not hooked up with Jim Ingersoll, you are making a mistake. So again, if you're on the East Coast and certainly around the Richmond area, you need to look up Jim Ingersoll and uh, get introduced. All right, guys, have a great day and off to day two.